Welcome to Soul Restoration Ministry. Thank you for joining our midweek Wednesday service. Please grab your Bible, your pen, your notes, your paper, whatever you need to make this um, service memorable for you. Um, also, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. See you inside. So let's get into the word a little bit. I believe you're going to be blessed. I'm going to believe you're going to learn a lot in the name of Jesus. So my title is Strengthening Me for Exploits. And uh, for the first quarter of the year, we talked about what? Love. They that know. They that know. And knowing God was what? Love. We talked about knowing God as love. And for this second quarter, up until we finish June, we're going to talk about strength. They that know the Lord their God shall be what? Strong. So we're talking about the strong. What does the strong mean? And how do you get stronger? Somebody say amen. <clears throat> I, did, I told you that strong is not this muscles. Strong is the inner virtue you possess. That helps you fight the attacks of the devil. Somebody say amen. When you're fighting the devil, your muscles, physical muscles from the gym don't count. He's a spiritual being. So you need virtues and values that are internal, that are virtuous to overcome the devil. That is what makes you strong. Somebody say amen. And if you're able to do that, you're able to do what? Exploits. Somebody say amen. We've been using Daniel chapter 11, okay, as our precipice. That is where the scriptures are. But I want to give you context, and then we'll go into strengthening me for exploits. All right? So in 167 BC, actually it was December the 16th, something happened in this world. Okay? And I, I know I, I teach you these things because you need to understand scripture when it is being what unfolded. All right? There was an empire in the world called the Seleucus Empire. Okay? So right after Alexander the Great died, Okay. History, not Bible, history has it that four of his generals took the Greek empire and split it into four. You understand? It was four. And one of the generals was called Seleucus. Okay. And Seleucus was the one who inherited, should I say, the southwest part of his empire. And he was very, very, very influential because he was the one who actually inherited the region of Alexander the Great's empire which contained Babylon. Okay, so Alexander went all the way from Greece, Philippi, and came all the way down to basically India and beyond. All right, and he made his second headquarters, for that matter, Babylon. Right, so he died in Babylon, and then basically they split. So Alexander never actually went up to, back to uh, Greece when he died. All right, okay. So the guy, the general who was controlling that place was called Seleucus. And uh, four generations from him, four descendants from him, he had a grandson who was called Antiochus. Okay? And this Antiochus thought that he was the man. I mean, this guy was very, very proud. Okay? And so he added another title, his name. So he became Antiochus Epiphanes. And that Epiphanes means God of this earth. Right? So he is Antiochus the king of the Seleucian Empire, then he added God of this earth onto it because of his pride. If you read the historical record, he is recorded as one of the most wicked men that lived. He was a tyrant. The guy was very wicked. All right? So he wanted to restore somehow his great-great-grandfather's glory, and he decided to go west. So he went all the way to, at some point, he got to Egypt, and he was trying to annex Alexandria. Okay, so Alexandria, who is Alexandria named after in Egypt? Alexander the Great. And he was trying to create that whole thing. You understand? But when he got to the Jewish region, okay, the Israeli region, he would face opposition, right? And he didn't understand their religious cultures. So what Antiochus did was, Antiochus said he is going to basically crush Judaism, as you know it. And you know what this guy did? I mean, he was, he was wicked wicked human being. So what he did was he went to Jerusalem, man of God, and Antiochus Epiphanes literally banned the worship of God. Okay, the God of Israel. He said nobody can worship this God anymore. And what he did was in order to prove how serious he was, he got pigs. Right? 
Now, you know, in Jewish tradition, they don't do pigs. But this guy got pigs and went into the altar. You know, the altar court, and now called Holios of Holios. This guy got pigs. And on the altar, the brazen altar where they make sacrifices of cows, he took pigs. And then he would kill the pigs. And then what he did was he would use the golden bowls of the temple to collect the blood. You understand? Then what he would do is he would take the blood and he would go into the, you know, they have the outer court, the inner court. So he would go into the inner court where they had the showbread and the lamp and all those things. And he would sprinkle the blood of the pigs all over there to defile the temple. Do you understand? Okay. And then what he did was he actually parted the curtain. So you know the outer court, the inner court, the holiest of holiest. So behind the holiest of holiest was where the Ark of the Covenant was set, which Moses had. Well, what he did was he parted the curtain and he put a statue of Zeus, the Greek god, there. You understand? So he defiled, like he defiled the temple. And he was doing it with such abrasion and tyranny. He was killing and destroying like a genocide kind of thing. He, did have, he was just reckless. And he got to the point where he said, I have defiled this thing so much that now your God is meaningless and you have to worship Zeus. Do you understand? Okay. So it was very, very foul. And because of fear, a lot of the Greeks, the, the Jews, stopped worshiping this God that you and I know. You understand that? Okay. So, whilst he was doing that, there was a priest at that time called Matathias. And Matathias says, I am not going to bow down to, I uh, know, to, to, to Epiphas, uh, to Antiochus and to this Zeus thing. So, he actually escaped into the hills. You understand? And he started a rebellion, him and his sons. And believe it or not, that rebellion actually worked. You understand? It worked. Amazingly, it, it took hold and it encouraged the people. And they became stronger and they said, you know what? We are going to stand for this God that we believe in. But he, this Matthias guy was the guy who began. Now, funny enough, if you are a student of scripture, you understand that there are these books who are not part of our canon. We wrote Genesis to Revelation, but there are certain books that just didn't, were not included in the Bible as you know it. And two of those books are Maccabees. First and second Maccabees. It's in the Jewish Orthodox, and it's all about this guy that I'm talking about called Matathias and his children. And the whole first and second Maccabees is about these guys and what they did. Okay? Now, Daniel lived in 536 what? B B.C. So Daniel in Daniel chapter 11, let's go to Daniel chapter 11 now, verse 31, okay? Prophesied what I've described to you, Antiochus and all those kind of things. And Antiochus was so wicked that he became the first example of what the Antichrist will do in this universe when he comes. He was a wicked man, okay? So Daniel in prophesying 400 years before it happened said, the armed forces of his shall appear in the holy land. Look at how specific this thing is. And they shall pollute what? The sanctuary. The spiritual what? Stronghold. And shall take away the what? Continual daily burnt offering. And they shall set up in the sanctuary the abomination, which is Zeus, that astonishes and makes what? Desolate. He said nobody can worship God anymore. You have to worship my Zeus. Probably an altar to a pagan what? God. This Daniel that I keep telling you about, he is bad. Oh, Daniel could see. So Daniel saw it. Now let's go to 32. And such as violate the covenant, he shall what? Pervert and seduce with what? Flatteries. You remember pastor talked about flatteries? That is the flatteries. That's where he gets that from. But the people, oh, read it with me. Who know their God, Matathias, shall prove themselves what? Strong. And shall stand firm and do what? Exploits. Somebody say, God look for a man who will stand in the gap. Uh, in your time and in your season, may it not be a nun. 
God is looking for a man in your family. May it be you in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says, and they shall stand firm and do what? Exploits for God. Somebody in your family, it might as well be you, has to stand for the dictates of God. Somebody say amen. Now let's go to 33. And they who are what? Wise and understanding among the people shall what? Instruct many. They are wise and they have what? Understanding. And all you are getting, get what? Understanding. May God give you understanding that you will be able to instruct many and make them understand. Do you understand? And make them understand. Though some of them and their followers shall fall by the sword and flame by captivity and plunder for many days. Matatia said, I didn't care, but I understand God and I will instruct the people so that they may stand for the kingdom and that is what he did. Do you understand? So the thing that gave Matatia strength was what? Understanding. Wisdom. So part of the reason why we say you should read the Bible all the time is because we want you to understand certain things so that you can be what? Strong. Because if you don't understand and you don't know what you are about, the devil will convince you of something that you are what you are not. He will convince you of something that you are not. Somebody say amen. That was an exploit. That was an exploit. If Matthias would not hold where would Judaism and the God that you claim you serve, where would that thing be right now? So God is counting on you to stand so that his traditions and the word of God will continue to the next generation. But in order to do that, you need to understand what this thing is about. I was talking to my dear doctor friend, Dr. P, and she was sharing a testimony with me, okay, about what happened. I'll let her tell you later, but she decided to stand in her school and she won an award and she was telling me about this thing that was so glorious. I'll let her tell about it later. But that is what I mean by what? They that know the Lord, their God. Just give God a chance. Look at your neighbor and tell them, give him a chance. Just give God a chance. And watch what he will do. Somebody say amen. Now what I'm about to do is I'm about to share with you three things I believe that strengthen you. So when me and Kendall go to the gym, hallelujah, I don't think I'm lying. Kendall, have I not been to the gym with you before? Once. Amen. We were there. We were there. And we said we were going to strengthen. So we did dumbbells and then we did some squatty things and then we did some lateral things. And for that one day, I was strong. Amen. Hey. <laughs> but of course, Kendall continued and became Mr. Ohio and I'm still eating chips on the couch. Amen. God is good. What are you laughing at? You guys are with me. You're not here. You're with me. Chris, I know you eat them chips. I've seen you. <laughs> God is good. Amen. But there are things you can do to get stronger. And what I want to do is talk about those three things today. Some of them. Are you with me? Somebody say presence. Somebody say presence. You see, these men of God that we read in the Bible, they are so effective in their worship. That presence of God is like strength to them. Do you understand? I'm talking about presence. All right? I'm going to give you an example here. Bring my gun. Bring my gun up there. You see this gun? It's a nice one, isn't it? It's a nice gun, isn't it? It's beautiful. I want to point out something to you. Very important about presence. Think about it. Okay? Uh, KK, come. You see how KK is much taller than me? Let's just say he's got me by size. Okay. Muscles. Okay. All of that. All of that. All right. All right. Listen. If KK is attacking me, all right, he's attacking me, and uh, I have a gun, but he doesn't see it. He would think he all that. And then he's coming and he's coming and he's coming. So all I have to do is just... Flash my gun. All of a sudden, the presence of the gun will change his behavior. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, thank you. When we talk about the presence of God, 
A lot of you only understand it to mean I am sad. I am on the couch and I turn on my radio in the car and I'm singing what is that Israel Houghton one? Nothing like your presence. Oh Jesus. Oh yeah, to me. You know, you know that one? You, you, your presence is everything to me. You think that is all there is about presence. And then you cry a few and then you say, I'm, I'm broken my sadness for three hours. That's all you think presence is. But for the devil, presence is like a gun. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen, 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 listen. If the thief is coming to your house and you flash, presence is not songs. But if you don't know what you have, the devil will convince you that presence only means you are sitting in your car and you are sad and you are listening to FM that says oh Jesus, oh Jesus and you cry that is all there is to presence to you but the presence means something different when the presence of God is with you it causes the devil to say he, she person has a weapon do you understand what I'm saying? Presence. So there's a man in your Bible. Let's go to Exodus. His name is Moses. And Moses said to God, remember he is going into an enemy camp. He says something needs to happen. And this is what Moses said. If your presence. It's almost like if the gun doesn't hit my hip. If your presence will not go with me, do not bring me. Do not bring us up here. Forget it. It's almost like saying if I ain't got my gun, I ain't touching KK. So all of a sudden, it doesn't mean just singing songs in your car and being sad. If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. Keep going. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your what? People. Listen. When he walked into Egypt, they knew him as Moses. But my God, he walked in with a presence. And now all of a sudden, a common staff could command the Nile to turn into blood could command frogs to hit the land, could command darkness in daylight that they couldn't see their faces. Ah, Kiba, Yanda, Zema, Yanda, Laba. Presence! First sons are dying because he carries what? Presence. Child of God, Hebrews chapter 12, I will never leave or forsake you, but you go to work and you, don't, you act like you don't have what? Presence. You walk around this universe like you don't have what? presence but meanwhile Abraham encountered God and he said he is the possessor of heaven and earth presence is it not in your going with us so that we are what distinct it, it, it sets you up so one of the things that you realize when the devil is attacking somebody Pam is they tell you God has forsaken you. Where is your Lord? He is attacking the weapon of presence. And instead of combating him with the word, which says, he says he would never leave me or forsake me, you rather go and lie in bed. Mm, he has abandoned me. Ampa. Look at my shoe. I'm only wearing Gucci. I don't have Louis Vuitton, so I've been abandoned. Somebody say amen. amen. Is it not in your going with us so that we are what? Distinct. I and your people. From every other people on the face of the earth. Please feel comfortable. Come on in. Okay. From every other what? People on the face of the earth. 
May you be distinct. May you be distinct. If you don't know who you are, the devil will convince you of who you are not. KK, come up again. Let me use an example again. Okay, so let's just say I flashed my gun. This is what happens. He goes a little bit. You see how I made him go. Then he comes back. Now imagine if he comes back and he sees me with the gun breaking peanuts with the gun. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? And then he's like, mm. I don't think Alvin understands he has a gun. Then he comes back and I'm using the gun, the butt of the gun, to do walls in my pictures. You know the nail in the wall. So this, you look at me like, ah, this guy thinks the, 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 the gun is a nutcracker. Now he thinks the gun is a hammer. Somebody say amen. Now let's just say he comes and he sees that I am using the gun for decoration. He was like, ah, the guy thinks that the gun is a piece of art. How many times does the devil come back and you are using the presence for pity parties. Sit down. Every time the devil comes around, you only talk about the presence when you are sad and you are doing your radio things. He's like, this guy must think that the, the presence of God is Kleenex. But people like Moses, uh, they know they have a presence and they know they have what? A gun. So he can stand before Moses and Pharaoh and say, let my people go. How are you using the presence of God? Now it gets deep. How are you using the presence of God? How are you using the presence of God? If you come to my house, like or somebody walks in here right now, and you guys all starting running away, and I know I have a gun, I'll be like, oh God, today we fight. <laughs> <laughs> or for that matter, if I love you, and the guy walks in with the gun, I will say, all of you get behind me. Let's fight. So when the devil shows up in your house, you are the one who says you are born again. But then you coil. And then you join them and you run. And the devil will say, ah, Kleenex. <laughs> Somebody say presence. <laughs> no, we, we say things and we say things. Do you really believe this God who created the universe thing we quote? Is in you. Nobody said afflictions won't come. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. Somebody said presence. Somebody say amen. Somebody say presence. Now, let's go to my next verse. Let's go to Acts chapter 7, verse 9. Look at what presence did for somebody called Joseph. And the patriarch, Joseph's son, boiling with what? Envy and hatred and anger. Have you faced that before? Hey, 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 hey. Your father, your wife, your mama, your children, your cousin, your nephew, your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law, your boss, your dog, your cat. <laughs> anger, hatred. So Joseph into slavery. I like how Mama Joyce is laughing. Slow Joseph into slavery in Egypt. But Joseph knew. But God was with me. Presence. Throw me in the pit. Presence. Move me into Egypt. Presence. 
Move me into Potiphar's house. Presence. Let there be a famine. Presence. You would have been doing Kleenex. Go to the next one. There's another man in your Bible. You know what? Yeah, ten. Ten. And delivered him from all what? Distressing afflictions. And won him what? Goodwill and favor and wisdom and understanding in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who made him governor over Egypt and all his house presence. They can attack. But if you understand presence and that you have a weapon, you can turn things around. Joseph is reframing his world. Presence. Go to Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 1. Another man, his name is what? Solomon. Him cried yet. The whole concept of him coming alive cried was, was, was flawed. He was a product of adultery. Oga, it things weren't good though. <laughs> but Solomon, who are you? Charlie, my mother was Bathsheba. Imagine saying that in those days. Oh, Solomon, who are you? You know, my mama was. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Can you imagine right now? <laughs> well, I was, you know, uh, my mom was Bill, Bill, Bill Clinton's side chick. My mom was Joe Biden's side chick, Trump's side chick, Vladimir Putin's side chick, Hitler's side chick. That one there, you are, you are, you are gone, crap. But Solomon, son of David, was strengthened in what? His kingdom. And the Lord, his God, was with him and made him exceedingly great. Presence. Presence. Let's go to my next verse. Samuel grew because the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. Presence. Presence. Let's go to my next verse. David. And David went on and grew great. And the Lord God of hosts was with him. So, when KK was attacking, was I aware that I have a gun? Are you aware you carry his presence? Well, if you're not aware, it's not the devil's fault. He will come and say, you got nothing. You're a loser. You suck. And you too, you will turn on the song louder. And say, yeah. That's me, loud. <laughs> you know, Prophet Prince, sometimes we are funny. I, I think the devil actually sometimes sits there and says, ha, 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 ha. This, this is too good to be true. <laughs> he comes into your camp and he says, e, this guy says he carries presence. So. But no, no, this one there is too good to be true. Even when they woke up from bed, they say they are a loser. Say, okay, demons, demon 99. You go, this one there is too good to be true. Apprentice 99, not even Apprentice 1. Somebody say amen. Somebody say presence. Now let's go to the next thing which helps you grow. Today, Mother's Day, I'm trying to be nice. Okay, the next thing that helps you to grow is, 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 is knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. 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 He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. I've been saying it for almost a year now. If you don't know knowledge 
who you are, the devil will convince you of who you are not. Knowledge. The whole army of Israel were scared of Goliath. That 17 year old boy who was singing, My heart is yours forever. Oh, na, 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 na. okay, you, okay, oh, oh, that one. Oh, oh, you come and stand up here and sing it. <laughs> I know. So, 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 somebody say amen. But that boy, <laughs> okay, you're making me laugh. I'm trying to be serious. Stop laughing so I can be serious. Okay. But he stood before the same Goliath and said, who is this that defiles the armies of the living God? You will fall. Knowledge. Knowledge. What do you know? Or better yet, let me ask you something. All these years you've been sitting in the pews. What are you learning? Don't you know enough? Ah, okay. Okay. Apostle Prince. Between what you preached last week, you yeah, preached two weeks ago, and what I preached, what don't you know? It's all sitting on your phone. Yet still, when he comes, you act like you don't know anything. And you let him bind you with unforgiveness, fear. He's like, this is too good to be true. I thought in 1995, he got born again and went to Benihin. And then he went to Maurice Creflo Dollar, Maurice Sorello. Ah, but I thought he went to Five Day Crusade with Miles Monroe. And then I thought he got anointed by, by who? R.W. Shambach. Ah, but I thought I saw him dancing on Friday night. That today is today. Ah, but I thought in, 19, in 2004, March 24th, Sunday morning, he said, today, God is with me. Yeah. So we are in 2022. Yeah. And he comes and he looks at you still telling the thing doing Kleenex. Yeah. And he says, this one is too good to be true. Yeah. And then he looks he's like, this guy doesn't know anything. Yeah. Or acting like they don't know nothing. Go to Proverbs. A wise man, strong. Yay, a man of knowledge increased strength. A man of knowledge increased what? Strength. So when KK came into my atmosphere, he realized that there's the presence of a gun on me. It caused him to halt that, to buckle. Now it's up to me to demonstrate I need to know, I, need, I know how to use the weapon. So for all some of us, the devil comes into our environment and realizes we carry a presence. But because you don't know how to use the presence, he's like, well, he's using it like a hammer for art design. I got free will. And then when for some of you, he actually helps you. I don't think he looks good on this wall. Move it to that wall. And then, <laughs> okay, let me stop. Somebody say knowledge. Okay. Now, let's go to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11. And I want to ask you guys a very important question here. How did Jesus Christ overcome the devil? How did he overcome the devil? Some of you say the cross. He died on the cross. Eh? It is written. It is written. All those kind of things, right? And it's true. He overcame him in very ways. But Isaiah chapter 53, when Isaiah was prophesying the coming of the Messiah, watch what he said. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be what? Satisfied. By his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. When Jesus Christ stepped into the earth, he knew. He knew he was the son of God. 
Nobody else knew. He knew. The demons knew because they said, who are you, son of God? He knew. Everybody else had to discover. Because he knew what was on the other side of Calvary, he said, you know what, I'll endure it. Because he knew the salvation plan of God, he said, I will go through it. What do you know? That is heavenly revelation. That will help you go through something. All things work together for good. So when the bad things are coming, you just say, you know what? It's part of the deal. Some people know God so much that they say, but this light affliction worketh for me a greater weight of our glory. But because you don't know, you buckle. Somebody say knowledge. knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. knowledge. It has to help you. Presence. Knowledge. We'll get to heaven and God will simply open the treasures. And then you'll see all these marvelous things. And then you start asking questions. And the only thing you will say is, I didn't know. And he will say, but I told you, study to show that self-approved as a workman, rightly divided the word of truth. Some of you traveled with us last weekend to D.C. Or I always talk about Pastor Eastwood or Benny Hinn and all those people. Okay? I have never seen such people who are so aware that they carry the presence of God. Or they know it. The man will just walk in there and sing one song, two, three songs. His voice is not even that good. I mean, let's face it. He doesn't have a singing voice. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not you guys. All of a sudden, presence, boom. Can Benny Hinn sing? Presence. And, and you know the guy knows something. Have you ever not met somebody you're like, this guy, he knows, he knows his stuff? Yeah. Carry presence. He's no respect of men. It can be you. Somebody say amen. amen. But you know, that's the distinction between these men. They are where they carry his presence and what they know. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, we're going to move on from knowledge and I'm about to show you something which is your conviction. I believe this is where a lot of Christians also buckle. Are you ready? Somebody say persuasion. Somebody say persuasion. Somebody say persuasion. Okay. Um, are you persuaded you're a Ghanaian? Can I convince you you are from Okay, you see, you see Pastor Prince. Yeah. <laughs> Can I convince you that you are a Scottish man with blonde hair? <laughs> Can I, it, it, it won't work. Yeah. He is persuaded. Yeah. He's from Ghana. He's a Ghanaian. It defines his identity. Somebody say persuasion. 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 I'm talking about being persuaded to where you believe it is who you are. Persuasion. KK comes around me and he's trying to do his thing. I am, I, I am, I have persuaded myself I carry a gun. Do you get it? No, no, it's my gun. It, it, it's my, it's my, let's be selfish here. It's my gun. Do you, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? persuaded. All right. We're going to go to Romans chapter 8. That verse. Okay, is it 38 that I gave you? Okay, try to find me 39 as well as you show this, okay, if it's possible. Paul stood there and said, I am persuaded. Mm -hmm. 
I am persuaded. Listen to his description. That neither death. Think about the scope of what he's saying. Let's just not just read it. Think about the vastness of what he's saying. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. Think about the universe that he's described. If you bring it from the spirit from angelic crop, he said, I'm persuaded. If you bring it in his present life, he is persuaded. If you're trying to touch his future, he's persuaded. Principalities, he's persuaded. Powers, he's persuaded. Honestly, are you persuaded? The devil comes to you, and the way you do the Kleenex thing, it's like, ah. This guy's not persuaded. You can sing all you want, but you're not persuaded. So there's an element of doubt. Double-mindedness. Think about what I'm saying. The day I didn't bring my physical Bible, Mama Joyce, give me. Okay? The last time I was talking about the two types of faith, the euphoric faith, and then the enduring faith, Jeremiah was so persuaded. Put him in the pit. Treat him the way you want. He's still holding on. You know the funny thing? Okay, because he was so persuaded, the Bible said, my presence with him and I'll make him great. All the troubles of Jeremiah. Are we not talking about Jeremiah? What has made Job the greatest man? Endurance. He was persuaded. The wife said, curse God and die. He said, you are foolish. I'm persuaded. Are you persuaded? Neither what? Height. Nor depth. Nor any other word. Creature. Say creature. creature. Did God not create demons? Did God not create Lucifer? Or you think Lucifer just created himself and then God quaked? No, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So all of a sudden, Paul is walking the universe. I am persuaded. I will fall in the ocean. I'm persuaded. The, the boat will break. I am persuaded. The snake will bite. I am persuaded. Take him down on the walls. He is persuaded. Cut his head. He is persuaded. Miracles. He is persuaded. He will stand before King Agrippa. He is persuaded. Question. Are you persuaded? Some of us, our persuasion fails because you couldn't go to Macy's. Today, today, somebody's, some, some mother somewhere, their persuasion will fail. Because yeah. their children they didn't buy them the right chocolate. Mm, I'm sad. Yeah. Turn the song up. Presents, tissue. <laughs> you're trying to laugh, but you're keeping it in. Uh, you know what? Somebody say persuasion. I am persuaded. Is it in Romans chapter 4 verse 38 where Abraham said, I am persuaded, full of confidence that God will provide me a son. Are you persuaded? Portia, are you persuaded? Somebody say presence. 
Somebody say knowledge. Somebody say persuasion. May you progress through all three. Karen, may you be persuaded. Karen, may you be persuaded. At some point, I had to convince myself that I'm just speaking to myself. I said, God, this tight thing is better work. This broke thing is not going well. I have to be persuaded. Uh, one of those days, Tima, I got tired of bitterness. I said, hmm. Me cry, I'm always too mad and angry. I have to persuade myself that this love thing works. So, so I started persuading love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Christians, but we are funny, you. Hey! <laughs> One day I was looking at the Bible, I'm like, ah, Charlie, I have to persuade myself. Joy works. So. Yeah. This sad, sad thing. Yeah. That says the joy of the Lord is my thing. I'm still sitting there, sir. Presence. Knowledge. Persuasion. What will God do with a man who is persuaded, who knows, and who understands presence? He will be an Ezekiel changing the world. So could it be the reason we don't see the exploits is because these three things and others are just not there. May we launch into another realm. May we launch into another realm. It's 1141. I'm trying to help you grow. I was talking to Brian Khan. One of those days when we were driving him. And we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking. And, you know, I was asking him about the prophetic gift and all these things. And Khan said, Alvin... A lot of people have gifts. But when I show up to minister, the thing I want is presence. Because the gifts will operate. But the thing that makes an impact is the presence. And so I watched this young man stand before the pulpit and he would start singing. And the presence would carry. Honestly, can you not tell when the presence of God is with somebody? And you yourself, you, are, you, you like it. You like it. So you can be in a whole church, and when you have trouble, you don't go to anybody. You go to the one that you know carries presence. You do it. Why aren't you going to Kweku? But when your trouble came, you went to Ya or Kofi. Because you know this one carries presence and they know something. It might as well be you. Thank you so much for joining our midweek service today. I know that you were truly blessed by the message. I encourage you to share that message with someone else. And we look forward to seeing you here same time next week. Goodbye.